How's everybody doing today? Um, my name is Jonathan G. Blanco. I am the founder and CEO of Niftmint. We're an NFT commerce infrastructure for brands that allows brands to sell mint custody NFTs on their exact uh, e-commerce platform. But don't worry, this is not going to be another soft sell. I'm just going to actually talk to you about uh, some information that you can use, whether you work with us or work with anybody else. So uh, we believe NFTs are simply digital inventory. And right now uh, in the market, we're very familiar with profile pictures. We're very familiar with the art, music, gaming, utility, which is kind of overused, in my opinion, and uh, virtual world worlds. Um, profile pictures, as you all know, is really what has kind of taken shape here uh, overall and, and where the majority of the market is. But I believe that profile pictures will actually be the smallest vertical in NFTs in the near future. Doesn't mean it'll shrink, it's just other use cases will grow uh, exponentially overall. There'll always be a market for profile pictures, it's just NFTs will be used um, by everybody without even recognizing it. So. Everyone's a genius in a bull market. You, you had people getting into NFTs and then you had brands basically doing these fast follower type of things. And frankly, the way these brands were getting into NFTs uh, was the same way that they might think of a, a Super Bowl commercial, meaning like how do we get a lot of attention really quickly uh, and just pray for the best. Um, but that is not a great long-term strategy, uh, especially when the cryptocurrency market is back down to a trillion dollar market. It was just three trillion uh, recently. One trillion is literally half of Apple. So for brands to really focus on the crypto community is, is quite actually silly in our opinion. And sorry if I offend anybody there, but we'll get more into that as well. There are only 34 million U.S. adults um, with cryptocurrency. Um, it's estimated that there's somewhere between 300 million and 500 million that have some level of access to crypto. Every major retail brand, more likely than not, has more emails in their database than the entire crypto community. We, I've spoken to many large brands who have come to me and said, like, you know, it's really important to us that we just honor the crypto community when we do this. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? It's like, well, we really want to make sure that, you know, we have this decentralized this and we democratize that. And I was like, okay, well, what does that mean? And then she's like, I don't know. So what, when you think about it, a brand's job more than anything is to create products that their customers love that create revenue, that builds up the brand, and that increases shareholder value. Nowhere in there is it the brand's responsibility to teach a customer how to use Web3 or how to onboard into Web3. And there's only 30 million MetaMask users. So for a brand to triangulate and find that exact customer target, um, frankly, if you're a CMO in this room and that's what you're doing, uh, I think you should really focus on your existing customer, your existing user overall, and get them to use it in a way that works really well for them. So we're at this really interesting point right now in uh, crypto. We're in like the 95, 96 timeframe, but it took till 2005 for us to get to 1 billion users in the internet. Um, there's estimated that it's gonna take maybe till 2030 um, uh, to get to that with Web3. So, we believe that brands are the gateway to NFT and crypto adoption. And because NFTs are the most similar thing to what brands already use and what are they do, selling products. NFTs at the end of the day are, 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 is stuff, it's goods, it's inventory. So I want, this is a slide I always like to say, just take a picture of. So the NFT market last year was about 17 billion, 50 billion is the art market. Global e-commerce is a $5.5 trillion market. Brands sell physical products, which you basically can say, how do we make sure that we create digital equivalents you know, for these things? So the brands that right now are in Web3, we believe, frankly, are not serving their customer to their best need. Uh, if you were to tell, a, we're all, most of us in here are crypto-centric, but if you were to go to tell a customer and say, hey, let's talk in Web2 language for a second. I know you're ready to buy my product right now, but what I'd like you to do is stop, and now I want you to go to JP Morgan Chase, and I want you to fund that account with dollars, and then I want you to transfer those dollars to a PayPal account, and then I want you to go to Amazon.com to purchase my product from me. No brand, if, if that sounds crazy, that's because no brand would ever do that, but that's essentially what we're asking them to do in Web3. In Web3, we create unnecessary flows that actually increase 
uh, opportunities for churn, all in this realm of innovation. And frankly, that's just a silly uh, way to do it. What brands need to do is actually own the full um, uh, customer experience. And by owning that full customer experience, that means they do what they already do. They create flows that have reduced tension in purchasing because it's closer to click, closer to buy, um, management of custody. Um, you know, the, the one shill here is that's exactly what we do is we have an integration into e-com platforms so that brands can sell Mint Custody NFT on their platform so that they can own the first party data, which is a big part of their business overall. So I want to ask a quick question in the room. Do you believe that brands will sell more digital products in the future than they do today? Yeah? OK, most of you agree that they'll sell more digital products than they will today. So let me ask you this. Let's pretend NFTs don't exist for a, for a second. Or let's pretend the entire crypto market goes to zero. There actually still is a need for NFTs overall. Because if you're a brand here in this room, would, or even as a consumer, would you rather get a JPEG or a PNG that's password protected that you can log in on some website? Or would you rather have a file type that shows how many were created, your order in line, when it was created, any sort of metadata behind that, uh, behind that product, if it's attached to a physical thing or if it's attached to a service, um, serial numbers, etc. One of my favorite examples to say is I believe that in the near future, when you purchase a dishwasher, you're going to get a dishwasher NFT. We don't work with Whirlpool, but imagine getting a Whirlpool dishwasher and now you get your Whirlpool NFT. And some of you are probably thinking, that is stupid. Why do I want a Whirlpool NFT? And my answer is, you don't want a Whirlpool NFT. But what you do want is to have your warranty in one place, um, your um, um, the information about the product, the serial number, um, the, uh, how you look at it, all these sort of things, and then a simple, easy way to be able to uh, basically authenticate that you have that product. So you as a consumer don't care about this as an NFT. You're just, le the, the brands and the companies and the organizations are frankly just leveraging NFT technology to provide better experiences to brands. We're in a moment in time here soon where it just so happens that NFT as a file type is better technology and a better, can, can provide a better experience if it's guided than offering JPEGs and PNGs. But to that notion, um, NFTs are digital wrappers for digital inventory. So if you think about it as a digital wrapper of digital inventory, meaning you're wrapping this digital inventory with information, and that is how the customer is able to access this, use it, token gate it, et cetera. So now, if less than 15% of, of, of average consumers have crypto or use crypto, again, as a brand, why would you introduce that flow into, into that? So what brands really need is the ability to work with partners that custody NFTs for them, that allow the consumer to use that product in their existing platform because you as a brand want your customer to remain in your channels uh, or adjacent and to understand how they move and operate. Brands are the best at moving inventory. When we think about NFTs, it's really no different than any other product that a brand sells. There's brands that use the same manufacturer to sell similar things, and they might have different versions of that. And then it's up to them to really present this out. Uh, the token gating, all these sorts of features, that's essentially table stakes. But at the end of the day is how do you make sure that you don't force yourself into heavy crypto workflow uh, for no reason? Last, uh, brands sell products their customers love, and brands are the natural community builder. You, I'm sure you've experienced this where someone has walked up to you and is like, oh, I love your sunglasses, I have the same pair. I love your Rolex, I have, a, I have a watch too. I love your Nikes. Just because they haven't figured out Discord doesn't mean that they don't understand community. And so I think it's up to us as a Web3 community to actually learn from brands as opposed to coming to them and telling them, this is how you do it, you're wrong, you need to democratize. No, NFTs, Web3, we need to integrate into the brand existing workflow, making it easier for the consumer uh, to be able to take on these products overall. So with that, thank you for your time. Again, my name is Jonathan G. Blanco, founder and CEO of NIFMIT. I'll be right over here in the corner if anybody wants to chat some more. Uh, please follow me on Twitter, uh, and I'd love to chat with all of you. Thank you so much.